come in or you're sitting in the chair and then all of a sudden she steps away and grabs another woman and then they're talking back and forth whispering you know what, what we were talking at a normal volume why are we whispering all of a sudden laughter especially if they're touching your hair while laughing the storm away when you come in and you see there's that discussion of who is going to take you know you right then all of a sudden the one who gets you storms off uh, uh, wow. and they walk off <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, why did they give me the nappy headed one? I don't know what to do with Welcome to the Hair Debate Podcast. The Hair Debate is a community where hair lovers and professionals come together to discuss and clear up misconceptions. We debate, debunk, and discover all things hair. Okay, I'm the founder, Marilla Kane. I'm the host, trichologist, speaker, author, and hair extraordinaire. I love all things, guys, about hair. And so, you know what, guys? We have gone to the community. This is our very first episode where we have someone from the community to join us. And today we have Miss Jasmine. And so, now let me just say this. We would just love to just know a couple of things about you, Jasmine. So tell us, where are you in your hair journey? I am in between chopping it all off again or just, you know, letting it grow out some more. I, I'm getting scissor happy. I'm I'm on it. I'm like, I'm like standing there outside of the double dutch ropes, like, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. So I've got micro braids in now and my hair is growing really fast. So when I take them out, I'll decide, okay, do we chop again or do we just keep the natural thing going? Okay, you know what? And you're in that in-between stage that will break you down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know what? You're rocking the right style to kind of get you. You just need to get through. Once you get through this point and then you'll have a direction at that point to say, okay, I now know the look that I want. But in that in-between stage, it will definitely break you down that's what it's feeling like <laughs> a journey <laughs> i'm deep in the valley right now <laughs> so let me just say this jasmine um we are going to truly just dive deep into this topic and so our topic that we will be um debating and debunking today is discrimination in the hair salon why why are we here we posted uh a video of a young lady that went into the salon to have to receive a service and in that video they were speaking in a different language truly was tearing her down okay and so now i have to say we have had thousands of comments mm -hmm. you know and some comments have been you know oh i want to come for i want to come for them you know i want to be there for you you know i wish it was me not you you know and then we had some individuals that were just like you know you know what look you just need to toughen up you know mm -hmm. you need to pitch put, put on your big girl panties and toughen up and let them know and give them you know and so i want to ask you what was your response Yes, I remember that video vividly, and it brought me back to a time where I, too, had a similar experience. I was out of country. I was in Germany and didn't know where I was going to get my hair done. And I knew they couldn't do everything, so I just needed somebody to do a good washing and just scratch that scalp. And I went in and I asked them, just, just do this. I brought my own products. And of course, they're talking in their own language, going back and forth. And I'm like, look, I don't need you to do anything else. Just wash it. I had another similar experience. So that prepared me for that experience. Okay. So I knew going in just to talk them down, just to get what I need and get out. Like, look, I know you don't know how to do my hair, but I know you know how to wash. <laughs> okay. Yes. I know you know how to wash and scratch. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> get you there. And that was out of the country here in this country which we claim to be so diverse right that's right and do. You, you see there's so many stylists claim that they do all types of textures all types oh, of okay. hair but when you walk in and you know test it out oh, no i've never done it before i don't and then it becomes something that they discriminate against okay so yes. it's like it's taking their own insecurity or their lack of ability 
to do that type of hair then becomes oh, no uh-uh no that's too tough that your texture is too tight i can't do it and and that's just wrong you know if they couldn't do it or lack the experience just say that don't that's discriminate right. don't abuse she was broken down and that particular person was broken down because she didn't have that experience too many times i think that's i think right. we have had that experience <laughs> enough but she somewhat has been privileged to not have to think of herself as other when she walks in the room that might have been her correct. first time yes that was her first yes. time being thought of but we have to walk in a room and look for all the exits find out our strategy if something goes down <laughs> count how many of us are in the room <laughs> you know so um what tools prepared. yeah do they have surrounding them and or brought up right right <laughs> and so i think that's where the people that were saying you know toughen up because we experience that every day we know we are the other we know we're the minority of the minorities you know and so that's right um we, we prepare ourselves i'm sure she doesn't you know view herself you know as someone of african descent but she sure was treated like that on that particular day for sure yes she was yeah yes she was i have been serviced from people of other ethnicities and it does not feel good when they are speaking in a different language mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it just doesn't because you don't know. Now, I have no idea what they're saying, you know, but to speak their language and you're able to understand what they're saying. So, you know, that they're being vindictive and speaking in that language, feeling as though you do not understand. So let me talk over your head. Right. You know, right. let me. So I know that there were individuals that were just like, OK, tough enough, sis. Like, why? But you know what? I think for her, once she, you know, she did say to them, you know, um, no, you know, this is not what I was looking to have done. No, you know, she kind of stood up at that point. But when she went and talked about the experience, mm -hmm. I think she was truly just hurt yeah, from like was. me, yeah. like, like I experienced this. Yeah. She had, you know, she didn't expect to experience that right and i think for the for you know i think that is what actually hurt her because you know it's like we will go through something and when we start talking about it mm -hmm. the emotions it's come like up. okay yeah. yeah that lip gets the quivering <laughs> but, right, yeah. exactly. absolutely exactly exactly and so i think that that's exactly what it was and so um now you said that you've had more than one experience like that oh yes um for me personally i don't mind going to places where um people speak another language for me i'm i don't want to say i'm used to it but i am used to it and that i base it off of tone i base it off of you know um mannerisms the body language body language tells so much and so if i get my nails done if i get my hair if i get my doobie from the dominican salon i don't i don't care if they're speaking another language but i do know when they are talking about me based off of the body language and the tone you mm. know and so that is those are the cues i use to know whether or not i am welcome let's talk about some of some of those cues so so when you say you know the bot now the tonality i can get it because with the tonality you can also see the frustration in, in their face yes the yes mm -hmm. <laughs> okay and, <laughs> and so what are some of the other things um other tips that you can give the community and some things to look out for oh sure there are telltale signs when they grab somebody else up when yes. say, you, you come in or you're sitting in the chair and then all of a sudden she steps away and grabs another woman and then they're talking back and forth whispering you know what, what we were talking at a normal volume why are we whispering all of a sudden definitely a cue another one laughter like that's the obvious one you know especially if they're touching your hair while laughing <laughs> oh is that part yes yes <laughs> that yes. part you know or um and then the storm away the storm away when you come in and you see there's that discussion of who is going to take you know you right you see that discussion going they're sitting at their chairs they're going back and forth then all of a sudden the one who gets you storms off you know uh, 
Wow. And they walk off. <laughs> I'm like, why did they give me the nappy headed one? I don't know what to do with that. Um, so those are things that I've I've personally seen, if not towards myself, to other people. And so wow. that's where I leave. You know, I I won't stay in that establishment. I've only returned to those places where I am welcome. You know, you can speak your language, but you know, if you, if you break and speak to me in my language, and so I understand what's going on, you make me feel comfortable. You know, and and I know it's it's a welcoming place. You you know that I'm different, and you take that into consideration, and you know you honor that. You know, you honor the difference. That's right. So, body language for me really is is the number one and i can tell you know and then the up and down i forgot the up and down i'm sorry <laughs> look up and down like what am i gonna do with you and just just walk out just walk out for individuals that would have paid a deposit mm. would they be entitled to getting their money back i i'm sure most people will not agree with me but i am a believer that if a service is provided, if time has been spent, mm -hmm. then yeah, then you owe that person some money. If they're you know not satisfied, then as a good business person, business owner, that's person right. good that's you know uh, pride takes pride in their craft then they'll take the extra time to do it the right way or accommodate or refer, you know, and, and then give back part of that. that. That's what a good business person would do. But I am a firm believer if time is spent, a service is given, then there should be some money exchange, maybe not the full amount, but, but some. And I totally agree with you now, but now let me just say this. There are a lot of scams going mm -hmm. on when individuals are saying now, you know, uh, well, you need to make a deposit. So, every, you know, guys, beware of that. You know, I've heard of people making the deposits and there are no shows from the professional. Mm -hmm. And so be very careful of that. And, and then, too, if you have experienced that, we are now living in an area where reviews mm carries weight they don't make or break a okay. business guys no and, and it does mm -hmm. okay that's your power okay so utilize that power if if you have experience professional where you have paid a deposit and it was a no-show please leave a review because the world needs to know yes and so uh and so now what that deposit does is save it reserves that time yeah, for you to secure serve. that spot mm -hmm. it, exactly and so so now what when you do that prior to ask the questions you know ask once i get there and if things are not satisfactory then can i get a refund of my deposit you know so ask that previously prior to you scheduling that because that's what that's for Agreed. so they Agreed. very well may say when well, that was for reserving your time mm -hmm. if you choose not to be serviced because you aren't choosing not to be serviced they're not choosing not to service you correct you may not get your deposit back you know but definitely before you sit there and you pay for the entire service and you you've sat there and you're not happy you no, you you don't want to experience that. Can I just say something about the deposit business? Because it because it is fairly new in my experience. Um, I see it, it popping is. up, and for me, I just warning warning to all: don't do a deposit if it's your first time dealing with someone. Uh uh. Wait yes. until you have that relationship. If you have that trust, then do it. Also. Typically, those who are legitimate, they have all of that written out, what the deposit is for. These are the services and, you know, the cost of each one, you know, and then this, these are my conditions. If it's a no show, then I keep the deposit. If, you know, you don't like the service, then, you know, then I'll you have you come back another day or something that should be written down. And I've seen businesses do that, you know everybody knows come on if it's too good to be true then leave it alone and so just look for the ones that have it spilled out for you 
you know, or just don't deal. Don't deal with the deposits. There's there's plenty enough um, great stylists out here that, you know, their work backs them up. You know, the, the word is bond, their name is everything. And so, you know, the word of mouth is how we typically find most of the great people. So just to keep asking around until you get to the person that, <laughs> that has the best work and then ask them to show, you know, their work. A lot of times people are, you know, kind of, kind of discouraged, don't want to go in, don't know, but they've seen, you know, maybe a friend Well, Hey, can you send me your work? Do you have a page? What's your IG? You know, let me see your work and then spell it out. What is all this money for? Okay. So now let's talk about some things that may transpire if you were to allow someone to service you that you know you that gut feeling mm. is that okay um they're uncomfortable they don't want to do it you know i know this you know jasmine has talked about the signs guys so definitely look for those signs so now heat damage Ooh. if they are if they are now let me just say this i have in the past talked about you know heat that not to say that heat damage was not real but to but you know what we a lot of times consider heat damage may not necessarily be damaged mm. to the hair where it's creating breakage so you know because i've had people to do big chops and i'm like hold on <laughs> you know you, you you know you you know no you should not have done that but now if a person um just this past weekend that was servicing and she had not had um a pressing in a long time mm. In assessing her hair, what I realized is that the hair was, she had low porosity. And so the products pretty much just kind of set on her hair. Mm. Her hair was kind of hard. Mm. We did a protein, but what I realized is that when hair is like that, it needs to be fed. Yes. Okay. Yes. Let me just say, guys, that hair has personality. And, and it lets you know what it needs. You cannot go according to what your sister, friend, brother, cousin, anyone else is doing behave your your hair is connected to your whole body chemistry makeup say that again for the people okay. in the back <laughs> okay <laughs> okay you met a set of hair on somebody's head you met a set of hair on somebody's head it is not the same each head is different say it again for everybody in the back okay, okay. because okay and, and so let me just say you know what do i have clients that can't use regular water they have to use distilled water why because the distilled water has no chemicals in it so i had to have a conversation with someone that works from a national level in that department and i asked her you know please help me to understand that why you have certain individuals that can use you know water you know but then you know others that cannot well hair is porous mm -hmm. because we've been told well you know hair is dead it comes from the scab and it's i look at hair as a living entity i do too and so the, the hair is porous it there is an inner layer within that hair strand that goes and connect with your body chemistry makeup and and so you know we have to truly understand how serious it is for individuals to even touch our hair and interact with us on that level you know it is very serious i was servicing this client initially when i went over her first strand i realized like okay one your hair is porous mm -hmm. okay i need to feed this hair anytime that you have to go over that hair strand more than one time mm -hmm. the hair needs to be fed moisture period there is no other way to it it does okay so now what that looks like is it not taking not having the hair to be down where it's a sizzle but you know putting that product on your hand or misting if you're mm. missing it and, and rub it through your hair rubbing it you know taking a wide to comb going through that hair okay from roots to ends and so then you will realize like okay it has soaked in because it will mm -hmm. at that point in time i was able to go over and it just silk one time and i literally had to do that on it you know i put some mm -hmm. initially you know part the hair when i went back to do it again i realized like okay i'm still like it's still so i put sprayed a little 
coconut milk on my hands, went across that strand with it, silked it one time. Zip. And she said, I cannot believe that um, you're not going over my strands more than one time. I said that because you're not supposed right. to. That is what you will come against. If you allow someone that is not experienced, mm -hmm. experienced with the health of hair, so when they're uncomfortable and don't know what to do, let them know. I, you know, um, and and hopefully you have had the conversation with them prior to right. to understand that. Okay, I will receive some of my money back because I'm not comfortable with you servicing me. Correct, correct. And and then go to someone else that is. I, you know, I know for us what we tend to do a lot of times our book appointments last minute mm -hmm. because we have things going Yeah, because there's an event coming up. Got to get it did because, you know, we going somewhere. We're going to show up and show out. Yes. Oh, you better say that. <laughs> and so these are the things that, you know, we have to truly, truly um, consider, you know, prior to you, you know, like, okay, what am I going to wear? First, what am I going to do about my mm -hmm. hair? And go ahead and get that settle first because again if your hair is not good if you mentally mm. are not good you're not going to be the best at this event anyway say that again so you're saying something so important I, I i just i don't want to take a pause and just and give you your kudos because you're saying things that we have not heard before that we weren't raised with you're talking about people taking ownership of their hair people recognizing that their crown is different from everybody else's crown and that it's special and it's so special and unique that it needs to be taken care of. And we need to not only know, you know, what people are doing to our hair, we need to know what, what we're feeding our hair. So you talked about water before, you know, a couple um, clients needing distilled water. Well, depending on where we live in the United States, the water is treated differently. And for people who are, say, in the military or just move around a lot, they might have noticed, well, when I was in South Southeast Texas, my hair kind of started thinning out. Or, you know, when I lived in Germany, my hair was growing so fast. And folks will say those things and not know, well, okay, we've been feeding our hair different types of water, which has been treated differently. And this is the reason why it's so important to go to the community and have these conversations. It was until I came about and servicing her and realizing that with her, that made me go back to check my other mm. clients and say, okay, I mean, yeah. because I'm like, okay, we're trying all of this. But then also too, Jasmine opened my eyes to a whole different audience. The ones in the military that's traveling. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I've had that experience too. I'm prior military and moving around and a lot of the regulations dictated how we could wear our hair when I was active duty. Those regulations have changed a bit. And so there are certain styles now that we can wear that we've, you know, we've advocated for ourselves, we fought for. So we got some of those and they're more like protective styles. And that was important that, you know, the military recognized we aren't like the majority okay we we That's need right. to get things taken care of I'll, I'll tell you a quick funny story when i went through basic training my training instructor recognized that hey my hair needed to get done so i was allowed in basic training to go to the salon <laughs> to get to get my hair done and, and you know get taken care of a stylist who knew how to take care of my particular hair and he knew it took a while. So there were some others, um, fair skin um, trainees who have very thin, straight hair. You know, it was just spray it, cut it, you should be done. Well, they came back with yes. us and we took hours. So they got in trouble because they knew that it only took 15 minutes to do their hair. So why, why, why did you come back six hours later? <laughs> But um, I'm glad the military is, you know, they're, they're finally starting to get it. We got, we have a, a long way to still go, but it was important that he, he saw me, he saw the difference and that, yeah, all this heat, a hundred degree weather, we're sweating. I'm sweating my, I'm, I'm sweating my curls now. You know, I had it, a little cute little short do. I'm like, <laughs> now it's like this on my forehead. <laughs> 
you know, that couldn't be, that couldn't be, mm -mm, so you have to get that straight now. Well, well, I tell you, um, I'm so very thankful that the military, they are truly understanding and empathizing, you know, with us, with that battle and understanding how important our hair care is. Like mm -hmm. self -care Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> it is. It's our, it's self-care, it's therapy, it's, sometimes it's our travel agent, it's, <laughs> I mean, we get all the good. We get the gossip. We get to vent. I mean, and it's it's community. It all goes back to community mm -hmm. and belonging, belonging. So yes. you know, as as folks travel around, or if they're in towns where it's you know majority other, that that sense of community might be lost. And so, how do yes. those people yes. learn how to take care of their hair? and know what works for them individually. I mean, thank goodness for technology and YouTube and, and podcasts like yours, folks can reach out and figure it thank out. You. But, you know, um, it's important. It's so important, just like um, our churches, just like our community centers, you know, our after school programs, <laughs> just all yes. the, where we have a sense of yes. community. It's, it's, it's something that will always be, um, you know, just a special place. And it is. And when I tell you, Jasmine, you have been absolutely phenomenal today. I thank you for sharing. I thank you for being patient. Oh. Even when the enemy tried to prevent <laughs> me from being great today, I said, oh. <laughs> he should sure show, show up. up. You and you said, oh, no, not today. <laughs> not today. <laughs> See, I can got some people on my team. And so, uh, but it, you know, she was just like, no, 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 work it out, get it together. I'm here. Thank you for no that. No problem. I greatly appreciate that. Life be life and, you, you know, life be life. No, no, no. And we just got to give ourselves grace, you know? Yes, we do. And it's been a pleasure. And thank you for being a part of our community on at the hair debate please continue to share us we'll with do. other loved ones Absolutely. thanks for the opportunity and this is the hair debate we went to the community had a conversation with jasmine it was absolutely wonderful but this is the platform where we debunk debate and discover all things hair.